Harry's wife. Part 101.81, left broken and shaking. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We now turn to the Daily Beast, which leads with the headline, Harry's wife screamed at staff, left them broken and shaking with fear. New book claims. A book by the Royal Reporter of the London Times details shocking new allegations of bullying by Harry's wife and Harry. The Sussexes have previously denied the veracity of the reports. Tom Sykes writes as follows. New accounts of alleged bullying behaviour by Harry's wife have been published in a bombshell extract of a new book by the London Times Royal Correspondent Valentine Lowe. The respected reporter who first reported that formal complaints had been made about Harry's wife by senior Buckingham Palace staff that she bullied employees. Of course, as you know, the bullying report was commissioned, received, and then, in effect, not necessarily buried, but wasn't released. It was determined that the findings would not be released. To some extent, that would be seen as disappointing to those that had complained, and most likely was done in order not to continue the rift that was growing between Harry's wife, Harry, and the rest of the royal family. Undoubtedly, the Queen, having lost her husband and being in faltering health, didn't want another shitstorm to deal with. However, notwithstanding the fact that that report has not seen the light of day, it's simply open season now as a consequence of not only Valentine Lowe's publication, but also all of the social media and mainstream media that are reporting on it to bring forth the allegations and evidence that repeatedly demonstrates that Harry's wife engaged in a course of unpleasant, malign, corrective devaluations, bullying against a range of secondary and tertiary sources. This is problematic for her. It threatens her sense of control, and it does so with the release of evidence, a wave of evidence that keeps coming, using those emotive descriptions of screaming at staff, leaving them broken, shaking with fear. Those reading it will invariably think, how unpleasant, how awful to treat people like that. And, of course, there'll be those that think, well, it's no surprise, given that she's a narcissist, and when people don't do what she wants, or too slow doing what she wants, or doesn't do it the way that she wants, then that threatens her sense of control and results in her lashing out, demonstrating the absence of emotional empathy. And, of course... Old ginger bollocks, not the sharpest tool in the box, governed by her manipulations, and of course his own emotional thinking, buys into all of this. He thinks there's nothing wrong with shouting and screaming either. He sees that there's nothing wrong with the bullying. He buys into it as a consequence of the diminution of his emotional empathy, as a consequence of buying into the illusion that she has created. She has wrapped her tendrils around him, drawn him in, and basically bolted him on so that he is in effect almost like a mini version of her at times. Of course, that's when it's outward facing. Harry must do as she dictates with regard to everybody else. And of course, in order to keep her sweet and avoid the application of the cattle prods to his pink pods, it's necessary for him to go along with it. He buys into it. Better that he deals with people that way than he gets the old pink pods squished into the pink pancakes. The article continues in the new extract from Lowe's book entitled Courtiers, The Hidden Power Behind the Crown, due to be published early next month in the United Kingdom, Lowe alleges that Harry's wife repeatedly left staff in tears, shaking with fear, after subjecting them to or in anticipation of angry tirades. So whilst we have this wave of revelations at this juncture, when the book comes out also, there'll be even more that comes from it. Tom Bauer came along. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Now it's Valentine Lowe. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. And once upon a time, the palace might have sought to protect Harry's wife and Harry from this in the way that they did with regard to the claim against the Daily Mail or Associated Newspapers Limited. Not anymore. They're the Duke and Duchess of Overseas, and as a consequence of their own behaviours, have been cut adrift. The article continues, Harry's wife has previously claimed the accusations are part of a calculated smear campaign. Projection, provocation, deflection. 
Lowe also alleges that after a series of public engagements in Australia, Harry's wife was overheard by several people saying, I can't believe I'm not getting paid for this. Lowe writes that in 2017, six months before the couple were even engaged, she told an advisor of Harry's, I think we both know I'm going to be one of your bosses soon. Threat. Lowe alleges that Harry's wife saw it as an insult to have to deal with junior staff, and when gently advised in late 2017 to go easy on her and Harry's staff, is said to have replied, it's not my job to cuddle people, absence of emotional empathy. Lowe also alleges that Harry's wife threatened Harry that she would break off the relationship with him if he didn't publicly announce she was his girlfriend. Use of threat. Lowe quotes a source saying, she was saying, if you don't put out a statement confirming I'm your girlfriend, I'm going to break up with you. Another source told Lowe, he was freaking out, saying she's going to dump me. However, it is the bullying allegations that are likely to be the most damaging to Harry's wife and Harry. After speaking to one individual particularly harshly in front of the other staff, Harry's wife, it is alleged, told the person, don't worry, if there was literally anyone else I could ask to do this, I would be asking them instead of you, belittlement. Lowe says that Prince William, hearing of the incident, consoled the woman, assuring her she was doing a really good job, causing her to burst into tears. One staffer who missed a call from Harry's wife is reported to have said, she hasn't called back, I feel terrified. This is so ridiculous, I can't stop shaking. There's then the rep repetition of the member of staff that was bombarded with malign hoovers that I've dealt with in part 101.67. Harry's wife has previously denied allegations of bullying, the Daily Beast writes. They were published just before Harry's wife's bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey was broadcast. Let's just call this what it is, a calculated smear campaign based on misleading and harmful misinformation. A statement from the Sussex's spokesperson released in March 2021 read, We are disappointed to see this defamatory portrayal of the Duchess of Sussex given credibility by a media outlet. Well... You may well be disappointed, spokesperson, but it's happening again. And the number of publications that are reporting on all of this, I could choose a good 15 different mainstream publications who are all repeating these allegations, not standing up for her, some saying this is the measure of what she is with their opinion pieces, others just reporting it. And for myself, of course, dissecting it with regard to narcissism. But the fact that so many people are repeating it demonstrates that the support that she once enjoyed has very much melted away, and there are very few that will now stand and defend her in light of these allegations. Of course, there will be some that will do so. They will continue having nailed their colours to her mast, but the evidence speaks for itself. And the fact that so many media outlets are continuing to report on this demonstrates that they accept, in effect, what has occurred and are quite content to report upon it, and the cumulative effect is yet more challenge fuel for Harry's wife. Undoubtedly, we'll see a reaction from her. She can't help but do so. After the torrid time of the funeral and the shopping list approach that she's adopted, there's going to be some kind of response with regard to these further allegations of bullying in Valentine Lowe's publication. There'll be the PR puff pieces, of course, sought to try and distract, but there's going to be something else that's coming from the Sussex camp as a need to try and deal with these repeated threats to control. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.